environments for nested definitions. A nested definition is a def statement within another def statement. Last time we looked at the following example. MakeAdder is a function that takes a number n and returns a function. The function that it returns takes a number k and it returns k plus n. Okay, so there's the make adder function. Notice def within a def. That's a nested def statement. We can execute this def statement. So make adder is now defined. And when we call it, we'll get back a function, which we should give a name. So we'll give the function uh, returned by make adder of three the name add three. But we could give it any name we want. The point is that add3 is itself a function. And that means we can call it on any number we want. What it does is it adds 3 to things. Now, how does it do that? Well, let's take a look at the environment diagram. So, we define make adder. None of this has gotten executed yet. The next thing we're going to do is call make adder on the argument 3. We'll create a new frame, bind n to 3, and then we'll execute this def statement for adder, which means we define a function adder, which takes an argument we'll call k, and um, has some additional notation that we haven't seen before. So it says it has a parent equals f1. f1 is referring to this frame, the frame for make adder which is the frame in which the adder function was defined. Okay, so now we return adder. Adder is a name, we look it up, it's this function, so that's the return value. And as a result of returning that to this location, we will bind the name add3 to that function. So add3 is now a name for this function, which means even though this function was defined within the body of make adder, it's now referred to in the global frame because we assigned it right here to a name. Okay, so now we can call add3 on the number four. What's add3? Well, it's a name for this function that we created. So we're really calling this function, which originally was called adder, but was returned and bound to the name add3. Okay, so we call the adder function. Notice there's some additional notation here. I'll explain that in a minute. But our frame has a parent, f1, which tells you the next frame in the environment. Okay. And as usual, we have the formal parameter for adder, which is k, bound to the argument that was passed in, 4. So now we evaluate the return expression here, k plus n. k is 4, n is 3, and the return value is 7, which at the very end we bound to result. Let's look even deeper at this. Okay, so here's the picture I just showed you. I'm going to explain each part of it that's new. So you understand exactly what's going on. We have a nested def statement. That's new. We've never looked at an environment diagram for that before. We have a frame label. That shows up when we need to refer to a particular frame as the parent of some function. Here we have an annotation of a function that it has a parent. So what is a function? A function is a block of code and the environment in which that function was defined. So the environment in which this was defined started with this local frame, followed by this global frame. All we need to remember is what was the first frame of that environment, and we know the whole environment. What's next? Well, we created a frame for adder when we called it. That was down here in add 3, 4. So we got the name for the frame, we got the formal parameter, and we also copy over the parent of the function we're calling into the frame that we create when we call that function. The reason we do this is to define the environment in which the body of the adder function is executed. So when we evaluate k plus n, here's what happens. We evaluate it in an environment with three different frames. The adder frame, followed by the make adder frame, followed by the global frame. How do we know it's those three? Well, we start with the current frame, we go to its parent, and then we go to its parent, which is the global frame. Now here explicitly we say what the parent of this frame is, 
Sometimes we leave that out because the default is that it's the global frame is the parent of every frame. Okay, now when we actually go to look up what the name n means, we look for n in the first frame of the environment and it's not there. We then look for n in the next frame of the environment and there it is. So, here's some new information. Every user defined function has a parent frame. Often it's the global frame, so you can tell what frame it is based on how it's indented. Anything that's at the top level, meaning not indented at all, is a function that's defined with its parent as the global frame. But nested functions have a different frame as their parent. It's the frame that was the current frame when they were defined. So the parent of a function is the frame in which it was defined. When was the def statement executed? Every local frame also has a parent frame. So these are local frames here and here. Often the parent of a local frame is the global frame. In fact, every other example we've ever seen, that was the case. But here with a nested def statement, it's different. This local frame has its parent, this other frame. So the parent of a frame is the parent of the function that was called. So we know from the function that was called what the parent of the frame will be when we call that function. Okay, the whole purpose of this is so that we can look up the name n and get the right value, 3. So here's an environment. It's a sequence of frames. This frame and then this frame and then this frame. Here's another environment, the make adder environment. And finally, here's a global environment, which consists only of the global frame. So a three frame environment, a two frame environment, and the global environment, which just has one frame, are all possibilities. A local frame is said to extend the environment that begins with its parent. So environments are made up of chains of starting with a particular frame and then going to its parent and then going to its parent. Now, when we don't say what the parent of a frame is, or when we don't say what the parent of a function is, that's because it's the global frame. That's the default. Okay, so a two-frame environment always extends the global environment. And a three-frame environment always extends a two-frame environment. So these things are built up incrementally. By the way, Sometimes we label frames because they're the parent of some other frame, but we don't bother to label frames that aren't parents because that would just add extra unnecessary notation. Okay, let's review how you draw an environment diagram. When a function is defined, do the following. Create a function value over in the space of values with func and then the name and then the formal parameters. If the parent frame of that function is not the global frame, Add matching labels to the parent frame and the function value, like f1 or f2 or f3. You can use any labels you want, but start them with f just so you know you're labeling a frame. Okay, so the label of the frame goes in the frame there, the parent goes out there. Then you bind the name to the function value in the first frame of the current environment. That's when a function is defined. When a function is called, add a local frame titled with the name of the function being called if the function has a parent label, copy it to the local frame. We saw that happen. And then you bind the formal parameters to the arguments in the local frame, just as we've always done, and execute the body of the function in the environment that starts with that local frame. So the only part that's new is number two here, where we have to copy over the parent label from the function. 